challenging as the previous game. Well, we go with our opportunity theme, opportunity for all the Canadian players, starting with Captain Tyler Arjon, his first time captaining his country at senior level. Well, a great kickoff by uh, Connor Braid. Unfortunately, a knock on by Argentinian, Argentinian refs just promoted to the IRB panel. And obviously, a big game as he begins his uh, international test career. First scrum fed by uh, the scrum half for, for Uruguay. And it's gone around 90. A little bit of pushing and shoving off the ball. And a, qu a quick swing by uh, World Cup for Canada in New Zealand last, uh, last year. Uh, scrum is a big part of the Argentinian game, so for Canada to turn them over first time, very important. And the ball squirting out kind of rather quickly for Canada that time, so we, Kyle Armstrong, scrum half, electing to go blind. He's freeing that one to his back line now. Connor Braid goes on the switch run with his inside center, uh, Patrick Parfi, recycled quickly in Armstrong, who's got one of the sweetest passes in the Canadian game, in my opinion, finding his number 10. Braid working hard to get that ball to deck. Armstrong taking a look up before finding his, his captain, Tyler, Tyler Adron. And now Canada moving the ball again down the right flank. Recycled once again. Having to dig the ball out is Armstrong. Penalty against Canada for not releasing in the tackle. Tonight for Canada with uh, Kyle Armstrong in the number nine shirt. Uh, Sean White uh, uh, with a thumb injury is out tonight and so Canada without an official backup, and that should it be required, uh, left wing Clayton Mears uh, will take the number nine, uh, move into the number nine spot. Well, throw into the first line out by Uruguay. Uh, disrupted by the Canadian captain, uh, Tyler Ardron, but recovered by the Uruguayans. And now Canada finds himself on the wrong side in, in that last ruck area. And a referee playing advantage, and they've certainly taken advantage of this opportunity. Uruguay moving the ball deep inside them. And they're looking to convert this first penalty opportunity, which they do. A very talented attack has played some professional rugby in Spain for Seville. And likewise, the fullback, Geronimo Echeverri, who has played for Valpocella in Italy. Connor Braid once again has sent that ball skyward. Fantastic kickoff uh, from Connor Bray. You can see the sevens experience coming in, but Uruguay's done well to secure possession, and they're moving the ball from inside their 22 as far as their fullback, who's looking for space down the field. The man who started it off, Connor Braid, he's linking with his backs. This is our le left winger for Canada here, Clayton Mears, the man who would go in the scrum half should he be needed. But the ball is recycled, squirts out quickly. Armstrong finds Braid, and Braid goes to the sky once again with this team lined up waiting for the ball. Canada goes to the aerial route, and Uruguay relieves the pressure. Bit of an aerial ping pong now. Ball allowed to bounce, and on this artificial turf, you can never predict how that bounce is going to be. You want to keep that ball in your hand as much as possible. Uruguay doing well to keep possession and recycle it. They've got their backs lined up. They're looking for the power in the middle of the field. Strong tackle on Delima. Stopped in his tracks, and Uruguay recycle once again. Oh, interception. Here's the captain. He's going from 60. This is Tyler Adron, his first game captaining his national team, and he scores under the post. Wow, what the intuition by that number eight. Tyler Adron coming into... The number eights will be a big matchup. Obviously, Adron... Uh, Hugely promising player for Canada. I think it's pretty significant that someone who's just turned uh, 21 is captain of this, uh, of this. Well, Uruguay now looking to a little bit of reply to that with their kickoff of their own. And that's a fairly good one, but taken by the try, the, no, not the try score, the offside against Canada. Ball crossing in front. Uh, the binding in front of the ball carrier, unfortunately, yeah. rookie right away after being scored on. And they've got an opportunity to put some points on the board themselves. kick is long enough but why and uh, in this starting 15 over 150 caps by comparison uh, only six of the Canadian 26 have been fully capped for Canada well great take catch and take by uh, the number eight for Uruguay he's taking the ball up to almost center field his team's recycled and they're exploring the blind side on the left of the field, a little bit flat footed. And Canada's defense, you know, those red shirts are coming up nice and flat and even. Look at the foot speed of the Canadians here, forcing the kick from Uruguay. And they've taken that ball inside the 22. 
Great take by the fullback, uh, Liam Underwood. And he's put a nice up and under in, and he's challenged the man in the air. Ball's gone spilling. Knocked forward by Canada, unfortunately. So they'll have a scrum to Uruguay. Uh, the rock hooker, Owen Parfrey uh, at hooker, and uh, Doug Wooldridge at tight head. Pushing, pushing before the ball in, so uh, Uruguay comes away with the free kick, and they've taken it quickly. And they've recycled the ball into the middle of the field there. That's number five, hitting it up once again, Delima. He's met solidly with tackle. And watch the red line just coming up, putting pressure on them. A little bit flat-footed, nudge it through. And that's Underwood again with the ball. This time he chooses to run. Ball is secured on the Canadian 40. What will they do? They've got some of their forwards lined up left. And they're going left. Braid looks to nudge the ball deep to the left-hand corner. It's got some good height on it. And it's going to find a favorable roll. This Listen to the crowd there, so they love that. And I think those long angled kicks on the turf are particularly effective. Really interesting story. I was uh, uh, born and raised in Nanaimo, uh, but uh, has played professionally in Italy and also recently in, in families moved to New Zealand, being in Manawatu, and a bit of a, a left field selection. Perhaps he played for the Wolfpack in the uh, CRC and his first appearance in the Canadian shirt. Oh, good for him. Good for, I applaud any player who's going to. Go and look for opportunities to make their game better. Watch Canada here as they attack with their back three. That's number, <laughs> number 11, Clayton Mears, showing a very physical approach to the game. Passes in behind Connor Braid. What are they they're going to the foot? So that slowed the attack down. But look at Josh Hart running. The right winger, number 14. He's picked it up on the bounce. That's great work from Hart. He's offloaded. There was a teammate. And that's a score from Canada. I tell you, that is complete. Anyway, 12-3, great start for Canada. And... Another restart to deal with. Well, let's see if they can do better on this one. It's taken by the scrum half, Armstrong. He's looking for some space on the blind side. Finds none, so comes back to the safety of his forwards. Ball is secured. Captain Adron is at the back of this ruck, and he's going with the pick and go to get some go forward and, and get his scrum half out of that ruck. Ball's at the back. Armstrong has got a pretty good box kick on him, and he's gone to the box kick. And that one's a bit too deep, unfortunately. So no pressure on the Argent or the Uruguayan fullback as he catches it. Now Canada tries to put some heat on the tackled, tackled ball area, and it's been stolen cleanly. Stolen cleanly by Canada. That was one of the second rows. Not sure if it was long. And they've gone deep to, to Braid. He's going to the foot again, and straight up in the air. Oh, was it a knock? Yes, it was a knock on that. All comes back to that. Chase and tackle and turnover by Chris Long in the middle They're of the back split. They've got two on the right, four on the left, so lots of space on the right-hand side of the field should they choose it. But again, penalized, free kick to Uruguay for going early in the scrum. Uruguay's recycled quickly, and they're looking to move the ball. Good adventure. Crossing the Canada center line right now and offloading in the tackle, unfortunately putting the ball down. So Canada's play, the referee's playing advantage on the knock-on to Canada. Recycled, big pot in the middle field. That's, that's Hubert Biden's taking the ball up. He's got a long placement going, so Armstrong doesn't have to dig too deep. He finds uh, the backs once again. Out, move it. There's Braid moving it almost in the fullback position. Oh, hit in the tackle and pass gone weary. Unfortunately, big responsibility for, th for them. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure they'll sort the timing out and, and look to put pressure on. Ball taken cleanly in the middle of the line. Deep on the right-hand side should, should we decide to kick. Very tight defense from the Uruguayan backs. And he does go to the right side. And deep. It's caught inside the 22 by Uruguayan's fullback. And he's <laughs> showing more adventure. Attacking outside his 22, and it's paying off because here goes the Uruguay. They've taken the ball over Canada's halfway line, and now they're looking for quick recycle inside the Canada half. Ball gone loose, but not knocked forward as a number eight who's been prominent carrying the ball takes it straight into the Canadian defense, tackled by Woldridge. Ball moved, they're flat footed, so he's going to go to the air, and it's a lovely kick way into the sky, but bit too long, so no pressure on Underwood. He runs out of his 22 and finds Mears with a long pass that he Bound here. Well, Uruguay's got some huge men in their second row. And there it is. Oh, it's curling. And it's curled a bit too much, so 
normal circumstances. And here's Connor Braid with a deep 22 restart. That's taking it right into the uh, Uruguayan 40 meter line. They've linked up backs and forwards. They're still handling it now. They've moved into Canada's half. And that's a good step off the left foot by the left winger. Uruguay fighting for the ball at the breakdown. Short ball to that number eight who's been so busy today. Pick up and go at the back of that ruck, looking to get some go forward. This is where Canada really has to shut down the options. Oh, nice fend, but a strong tackle by Canada in the midfield. Good recycling. And the Uruguay is punching holes in the Canadian defense now. The much vaunted Canadian defense is starting to show some holes, but Armstrong comes through well at that ruck and legally. Great timing by the Canadian scrum half. Uruguay's done well to recycle the ball. He's trying to look for those holes near the, the ruck. That's where they seem to be having some success. Moving the ball out wide, behind the dummy runner, passing behind. That's long standing up, making a tackle. Now number four, red, he's got to get away from that tackle situation. Can't, referee says play on. They've gone behind the first line of attackers, the dummy runners, run straight into his own man. That'll be a penalty against Uruguay for crossing. Promising sequence of... for the full Canada tour which goes this November in uh, uh, to Britain with matches against Samoa, Russia and the New Zealand Maori. Great take by Captain Tyler Ar Ar Ardron. And Canada's opted to pick and go, moving to the right, slowly creeping into the Uruguayan defense. Armstrong once again has gone for the box kick but I must say uh, both have been a bit too long so no real pressure on the Uruguayans. Slight hint of a knock on at that one but uh, not awarded by a uh, referee. And now he's saying Canada's gone Canadian 22 meter line. Very deep alignment in their backs with one forward hanging out, but it's uh, that man again, Captain Curry, just Tyler Adron, who's stolen the, the line out and allows Connor Bray to clear deep into the Uruguay in half. Balls recycled quickly and they go to the air looking for distance. Braid's at the back, lets it bounce. He's inside his 22, so he'll be looking for the comfort of the touchline, which he finds with a nice, deep, long kick, and that's real. And obviously with Ardron and Phelan and Long to contest uh, in the... Uh, Well, that was a good contest by Canada, but unfortunate there. But scrappy ball for the Uruguayans. So Canada's still applying pressure, even though they didn't win the line out. You see the men in red. They've got their defensive wall set. Uruguay looking for options close to the ruck as, they, as they've had a little bit of success in this half so far. But now having default, having to go to the boot. Look at the pressure from Tyler Ardron. Great pressure from the Canada number eight. Forces the, the miss kick. And then Uruguay does regain possession at their own 40. Canada's got their defensive line set, a little bit slow to come forward, I would say, just drifting laterally across the field. Uruguay nudging that ball forward. Underwood's got the ball, and he's gone to the air now, putting the rest of his team on side. Man and ball, did he take him in the air? It'll be a very close call by the referee. Says no, play on, that was a fine, fine tackle. So they've gone for the short, short ball. The Uruguayans recycled it well. They've got some numbers out to their right. Canada's left and he's gone to the foot. This is Mears looking for redemption on the last knock on. He's got it. Finds Braid and Braid once again high into the air. Look at the pressure and the bounce is allowed. This could be danger for Uruguay. All sorts of havoc if you let the ball bounce. Bit uh, Armstrong diving on the loose ball along with the Uruguay in number eight. And they've Looking for the kick once again. It was short, some space found by the Uruguay number 10 in behind the Canadian defense. So he's gone for a short chip over the top. Regathered and regained, but thrown away. This is the man playing in New Zealand long. He's thrown it over the top. Caught by uh, his other second row partner there. And we've moved it to the right. That's Underwood looking for Josh Hart. Tries to offload in the tackle. Unfortunately, a uh, bit adventurous. And that ball's gone out of bounds. A lot of exciting play there on. Uh, you know, the majority of the penalties at scrum time, they go against the team that's defending if, if the scrum does go down. Uh, 
Well, that's a good job by Canada to turn that scrum, make the Argentine ball, uh, uh, the Uruguayan ball, sorry, untidy. Very good, and and put them to the short side of the field. But look at the pressure from that number eight and captain from Canada. He's forced that kicker to change his, his run and to put a speculative ball into the air, which is gathered nicely by Liam Underwood, Canada's fullback. So Canada's got the ball, ball in hand, moved it out to Braid. Braid misses Mears. He's gone straight to Parfrey, and Parfrey's coming back in field, looking to offload, which he finds his, his open side flanker doing a good job. Loose head prop, Heward Bidens does well. Quick, quick ball coming, quick ball. Ardron in the middle of the field, takes it up. Still looking for quick ball. Connor Braid screaming for the ball out at number 10. He's got it, and he's gone in behind his, his support. So we're looking to find more ways to penetrate into the, uh, the Uruguayan defense there. Nick Blevins doing a very good job as they recycle and go left now. Armstrong picking and going, but a knock on at the back. Uh, full back in the winger, but uh, maybe Canada's got a counter move up their sleeve as well. We watch. Oh, yep, he's gone right. Tyler Ardron, he's found Underwood. Underwood's just slipped the tackle. Is he able to offload? No, the ball's at the back of the ruck. Looking for Bidens in the middle of the field. Running like a center, Hubert Bidens. He's still in possession. Armstrong's dug that one out quickly. Short ball. Oh, oh. forward pass, so he's going back to the penalty. And Rose and backs going in, make sure that ball was rucked quickly. And Canada benefits. Three more points on the board. Canada now at eight. Conversely, if Uruguay can get a score, narrow the gap, you know, make, make the second half uh, uh, much more uh, contestable for them in terms of uh, winning this game. Well, Canada on the restart, doing a very effective job this time, controlling the kickoff, now setting up a mall, and they move down the right-hand side. Mall's broken away, but the referee. It's marked in, uh, in the, over the past years, and uh, although he's not refereeing tonight, he will be refereeing in the uh, BC CDI League tomorrow, the Castaway Wanderers versus Marilomas. Great scrum by Uruguay, so they've moved the ball out. Number 10 wrapping around, he's found it again. Quick hands, up to 15 now, they're bringing the ball in field, crunched in the tackle, both by, by me. Put into this scrum, knock on. Armstrong setting his forwards. Nice and smooth in, a little bit of pushing, shoving from his opposite. He's not bothered by that. He finds Braid, and Braid is looking for the dummy. Quick ruck, quick ruck, quick ruck. Canada recycles the ball quickly. Not quick enough, so the Uruguayans are set. No advantage taken there. Canada's got the ball again now. He's gone deep to Underwood. Underwood picks up the bobbled ball and goes to the sky. Are those men offside? Did they hold their line? Yes, Josh Hart, winger, puts everyone onside. That's great chase by the number eight, uh, Ardron again. What's, but Uruguay is able to recycle the ball, offload in the tackle, and they have the ball just inside the Canadian half right now. Canada fighting at the contact. Their defensive lot wall is really well set up. Let's watch for the line speed. Watch these red jerseys, how quickly they come off the line should the Uruguayans go wide. There it comes, there it comes, yes. Very good, Uruguay's gone to the sky. Underwood challenges in the air, and it's a knock-on from Canada. The referee is going to go back. Well, to here's an organized defense facing the Uruguayans right now. Split field scrummage. Uruguay moving two men to the left and the four men to the right. Scrum is wheeled around again, but the ball must be deemed out because referee has said it's a turnover, so here we are. Back of the ruck, Uruguay ball in hand. Trying to hit it up with their forwards. Canada's defense is solid so far. Uruguay pushing the ball, and there's that little nudge chip in behind, but Mears is, is wise to it, and he's well in position. He's caught this one, and he's taking the ball forward. Good fight from the Canadian left winger. Good fight, he's still fighting, still fighting with the ball. Look at him work. That's great work from the Canada. Big hits coming in at the ruck time. Great international contest right for you here. Canada picks and goes through, through Biden's off to the left. Quick ruck, quick buck ball, nice. And the ball's gone out to Braid, and he's going to the foot once again. Territory, deep left corner, but Uruguay is well positioned for this one on the counter attack. Lovely step by the left winger, bringing the ball into Canada's half now. Once again off the left foot. That pass, though, found Wolderidge on his, on his uh, left shoulder. So Canada lucky to escape it there. Can they recycle the ball quickly? They're lined up left and right. Slow ball, slow ball. You see Armstrong initiating that he wants his troops to get into the ruck. Braid decides to run this one. 
And he's taken straight into the teeth of the uh, Uruguayan defense. Ball's recycled quickly, and Canada's moving the ball wide. Taken up by uh, flanker number six there, and he's found uh, this Woolridge now in the middle of the field Armstrong has. Ball looking for quick recycle. The Uruguays are doing a good job of slowing the ball down. Braid thinks he sees some space on the left-hand side. Unfortunately, his, his foot is a little bit long at this case, so the ball goes directly into touch. But that's the uh, whistle for halftime. Canada, first. Those crucial points allowing the Canada to capitalize on, on the pressure. Start of the second half, as in every game, very important. Uh, if Uruguay can get the first score, it's game on. If it's, if it's, if, if it's Canada that gets the try, uh, you know, I think this, we're going to see a, a fairly comprehensive final, for, final score line. Well, here we go, Uruguay for the kickoff. High into the night sky, and that's claimed lovely by Canada. I believe that was number six, Zach Coughlin. And Canada's recycled quickly. They're running the ball right off the start. Ball into the middle of the field. Canada looking to recycle. Both options, left and right. They've gone to their right. Into the air goes Connor Braid, testing the Uruguayan fullback. Great chase by Armstrong, as well as uh, Parfrey. And the ball's gone loose. Biden's in possession now. Canada's got the ball. They've got numbers left if they want to use it. Yes, Braid spots it, and he's gone for the overlap. Ball moves wide to the left. Canadian forwards are tracking nicely down that left-hand side. If we can get a quick recycle, Armstrong's there already. And once again, Canada's got his nice formation across the field. Braid looks to penetrate, and he's offloaded to his captain, Tyler Ardron, back to the uh, Uruguayan 40, and we've moved the ball left, right behind the scrum, and now Canada's got the ball in hand, out of hand now, as number seven, uh, Todd Wazicki, uses the kick, but he's turned the ball over to Uruguay, and they might make Canada pay. Oh, knock forward as the fullback tried to offload in the tackle situation, and Canada's dodged the bullet. Again, Canada it's... could use a little bit of depth in their attacking, especially when they get to third or fourth phase. Things seem to be getting a little static, even when they have the numbers. Number eight, Ardron's at the back of the scrum, picks it up, feeds Armstrong. Armstrong does a proper little grub kick, pushes it in to touch just outside. And now Canada's turn forced to put the pressure on at the line out. We'll look for John Phelan and Chris Long up in the air. And they've done some disrupting to the Uruguayan ball, and it's been claimed by Bidens. He's had a lot of touches on the ball, so Canada's gone behind the forwards to Braid. Braid's missed out another couple of forwards, and they're moving the ball wide. That's Parfrey on to Underwood. Underwood takes it strong and straight. Moved the ball in, but it looks like Uruguayans managed to get a turnover. At that, I think it might have been a slight knock on by Underwood or turned over at the tackle. So Uruguay's gone to the, the box kick infield. And Canada's had a chance to regain possession through Armstrong. He's at the bottom of the ruck, so look for the pick and go from the Canadians as they give him a chance to get back into his natural position. Slowly to the left goes Canada. Once again to the left, Mears has adopted that role at scrum half in absence of Armstrong. Moved it left, but they've been pushed back by the Uruguayans. Armstrong's at the back once again. Behind his forwards to Braid. Flat attack once again. Number four taking that ball forward there. That's Chris Long. Ball's gone loose. On that last time, it looked like he was shaping up to uh, pass directly from the base of the scrum left in attack. Mm -hmm. See what... Uh... Well, the ball's been squirted out. Canada putting up on lots of pressure. And that's number six, Zach Coakland, coming through at the ruck. But the referee says, no, he's off his feet after he's made the tackle. So Uruguay taking a quick tap penalty. There's that man with the rugby history, Ormachia again, moving the ball, and, and Uruguay's short numbers on the right, but they're still attacking. Great step by them inside the Canadian defense. So now they're penetrated inside the Canada half, and they've got men lined up left. Recycling the ball, great offload by the two props, and now Uruguay at the tackle area, begging the referee, saying, we want quick ball. Fly half's got it, and he's gone for the, oh, Israel Dag sidestep. Ball's been transferred twice, and this is Josh Hart with the ball in hand. He's a speedster, allowed to roll through that tackle like that. Great clean out. Braid picks it up with one hand, and he's gone for the cross kick for Mears. Read the bounce. Oh, unfortunate for Mears. Good vision by uh, number 10, Connor Braid, but unfortunately. And uh, diagonal cross kick from uh, Connor Braid. And just a cruel bounce for Clayton Mears. The ball going into touch when it could have so easily been a try. Well, the line has been taken and uh, deemed not straight. Oh, we got a free kick. Uh, 
let's see what Canada can conjure up as a as a as a set piece uh, a set piece back uh, play. Well, Josh Hart well out in the right wing, much wider than his uh, opposite number. Oh, Team. on the Uruguayans as they did in the uh, at the end of the first half. Line out to Uruguay. It's scrappy, but it's, they've still won it, and they've moved the ball into the backfield. Good pressure applied by the uh, Canadian back row. Captain Ardron in particular applying lots of pressure. That number eight jersey's been everywhere. Uruguay's gone behind the first receiver, second receiver to find some space out on the right. Canada halts that attack right on halfway. Recycled, and Uruguay still looking with uh, some pressure. Slipped the tackle, unfortunately. Great commitment by the captain, but missed the tackle. So Uruguay's got numbers that are equal and some space out, out on their left. Ball moved out to the left. Oh! High tackle by number 13, Blevins. It should be, look for a straight as it, the players are getting into it. They want to meet out their own justice. They're not waiting for the referees. Some punches going in. This is all out. This is going all out now. No one is listening to the, to the referee or the uh, assistant referees at this juncture. Well, this will be very inexpensive. I mean, that's a referee's worst nightmare. It just feels like that's gone on for minutes. Oh. Watching for the referee here, and he's definitely talking. Could you know tarnish the tournament for a for a player who uh, is is caught out that way. Anyway, opportunity knocks here for Uruguay. 18-3 down. Uh, 28 minutes to go. They got 10 men. Uh, Man advantage for 10 minutes. All right, we're going down sideline to Brian Kelly. On the sidelines here, that was a yellow card going against Nick Blevins for a uh, very difficult tackle coming up around the neck of number 11, Gaston Mires, who has headed off for the rest of this game. Replacing him, number 21, Juan de Fritas. He will be coming on for the Uruguayan side here with only 12 minutes gone here in the second half. Back to you guys. All right, and there it goes. And this is a new substitute for Uruguay, making a sn snipe down the left-hand side of the field. Trying to make his mark on the game right from the start. And unfortunately, the now they've brought in a replacement, uh, Vecino. He's gone to scrum half, number 20. So you will see number nine on the field, but now he's playing on the left wing. As the scrum is put in, Canada under pressure inside their 22. Ball cleared to the middle of the field. Remember, they're playing without a center. That's... Uh, Parfrey taking it up in the middle of the field. That's a great job by uh, Canadian Pack, putting all eight players in the scrum. Pat, uh, Patrick Parfrey taking the ball up. But again, some missed tackles here by Canada's Uruguay counterattacks. Mm -hmm. One on one tackle just slipped, missed by uh, Josh Hart, so gives Uruguay a chance to, to get some momentum and continuity going. There's a short blind side, they thought about it. So the winger stepping in a scrum half, oh. and once again, right at the fringe, Canada Ooh. is weak right there. They've been there all game, not really defending those A and B posts. Uruguay's got the ball, and they've moved the ball wide. They've got space on the right-hand side. If they can just link the ball from pass to pass, a little bit flat-footed now out wide, but the ball is inside the Canadian 22. And the, the player on down on the field, close to this touchline. Channels keep possession of the ball, make Uruguay defend. Burn up that time in the clock until Blevins can return. Right, so you'll hear the applause from the, the fans as they appreciate the effort that Delima's put in tonight. He's certainly played manfully for his country, and the game is on. And it's found uh, Mears, who's found himself in the middle of the field this time. He's done well, Mears. He's done well for our Canada jersey before, playing for the U-20s, and, and now with this senior side. Armstrong's looking, he's found his captain, Ardron, in the middle of the field. Good fend from Ardron. Can he recycle this ball? Long placement needed to get this ball out quickly. A bit slow. Canada has got the chance, or Uruguay's the chance to regroup. Parfris moved it on. That's a great break by the number seven. He's fed Underwood on the inside pass. Watsiki and to Underwood. And Try I, Canada. I think the absolute key to that move was a long, flat pass to Watsiki. And... Uh, you know, still 20 minutes to go, and again, these can be just cruel 20 minutes for the team that's uh, uh, under the physical pressure. Great pickup by the uh, Uruguayan number eight. That pass looks slightly forward, but uh, allowed to play on by the referee. They've recycled it quickly and turned it back neatly. Base of the ruck, we see where uh, Uruguay's making all their penetration close to the ruck. That's where Canada's defense has been found wanting. Uh, referee signaling that that man's got his hands on the ball. That's number five. Get one. Uh, you know, they, then they could even 
you know, like, I think a, uh, definitely a losing bonus points a possibility. Well, certainly take all they have right now, Uruguay. They're inside the Canadian 22. It's a great position to start from. If the lineout can be taken queen, cleanly, which it is, they've developed uh, a gr mall so they can really get the drive and get some kind of a uh, go forward going against the Canadian. And they've done it. They've broken away close to the, the mall once again. And Uruguay has scored a try. Uruguay on the... They're allowed to stay back into the game as we see Canada's uh, number 13, Nick Blevins. He's returned to action, having served his uh, 10 minutes in the sin bin. So Canada develops some momentum, put more pressure, and really put these guys away. Well, Canada will take that 10-minute patch because it was 7-7 while Blevins was off. And uh, anytime you come out of it when you're one short on even terms, you're pretty happy. Kick well up into the night sky by uh, number 10. And it's been regathered by Canada. And that's Clayton Mir stepping lively off the left foot. Done well to take the ball into the uh, Uruguayan 22. And now if the ball comes quickly, yes, Armstrong's found Underwood. He's chosen to step. And he's offloaded to his captain. And that was a great offload. Canada poised well. Five meters out. Options left and right. In fringe going forward. Off their feet at the ruck. Dean referee. Yeah, such a shame. Beautiful offload. 15 minutes left in the match, and Uruguay definitely looking for more points. Canada looking to, to put them away by scoring again. Contested well by number five for Canada, John Phelan. Ball still won by Uruguay. So they've got this rolling ball that was so dangerous, and Canada's put it down, committed a penalty, referee playing advantage. So it's been whistled, and Uruguay takes the quick one. This tournament in terms of, in terms of penalizing negative play, and they're doing it. And uh, the... Um you know, now Canada's face another big 10-minute spell, one short. That's a quarter of the game that Canada will be down to uh, just 14 men. That's a quite a bit of chunk of time to, to put pressure on those 14 players who are on the field. So Uruguay's got that driving mall going once again, but the ball's been spilled out loose. And it's been reclaimed. Zach Coughlin putting a lot of pressure on the scrambling back Uruguayan players. And now they're going for some width. They pick up the ball on the bounce. Still handling, and they found the blindside man coming in on the inside angle. Almost forward pass, Dean. No, nope. Canada might have won this turnover. Canada looks like Canada's won the turnover at that ruck. It's at the back there for Armstrong, and he's gone to his other fly half, Heward Bidens, who shows a pretty good turn of pace and a step off the left foot. Once again at the breakdown, Uruguay's turned it over cleanly. As you see, they've got numbers on the right, but they choose to come infield. The big man running straight at Clayton Mears, and he sticks him with a strong tackle. That's our Canadian left winger on this evening. Forcing the Uruguays to go look for more with Nice drop pass into the number eight. Strong tackle by Carl Armstrong, Canadian number nine. Uruguay inside the Canadian 22. Recycling Great. and pushing the ball. Tap tackle. Great effort by number five for Canada. John Phelan doing good work. Help us there to knock forward. Some more, yes. He spoke to the captain and he dismissed number 17. So the teams are matched now, 14 aside. And uh, that's a front row player. So the next scrum, we'll have to see some kind of rearrangement in the Uruguay inside, I'm sure. Clayton Mears making a strong tackle, one on one in the middle of the field. Great pressure from him. Uruguay having to scramble back, knock forward at the back of that ruck. Canada will get the scrum. Uruguay, they just, you know, they just seem to be always on the rack, but you can never quite put them away. They've obviously benefited hugely from their appearance at the Nations Cup this past uh, summer in Romania. Uh, they played Romania and Russia and Italy, Italy A. They didn't win any of the games, but they were competitive in all of them, and, uh, and a lot of these players were there, and uh, you know, showing the benefits of it tonight. Well, Barkwell in with his first tackle of the game off the tap penalty. Armstrong goes up to claim that one in the air, and what a lovely take from the Canadian scrum half. Committing himself to the ball and the air. Mayers is spun away from the back of that ruck. Moving the ball forward, Canada's got the ball at the uh, Uruguayan 40, looking for a quick recycle ball. Armstrong finds Braid, Braid goes behind. He's found uh, Blevins, Blevins tries to bosh his way through. He's tackled well, not held, can get up. That's good rugby. Good rugby, still Canada in possession. Uruguay is trying to slow this ball down at the tackle. Ref's not happening. Armstrong tries to take a snipe around the short side of that ruck. And now the ball's been recycled. Braid, ball in hand, still looking it. He's got Josh Hart outside them, but now Hart involved in the ruck. Biden's playing his third position. Now he's scrum half. 
and he's picked and go gone, and Canada's got the ball at the back of this ruck. Referee saying, not rolling away, hands in by Earl. Kick is up and through from Braid, so. And the kickoff is a, is a high one from Uruguay, and it's taken well by number five, uh, John Phelan. And Canada's mauling the ball. It's getting very physical in that area, and there the referee's got a pen. For Chris Long, is the end of his long evening. And the ball's taken cleanly from Phelan. And there's number 19 right into the thick of things. Aaron Flagg yeah. straight into the game. Takes that ball off of Connor Braid's shoulder and gets Canada moving forward. Aaron's Braid's got the ball in hand again. He's nudged it forward. Ball on the deck. What's it going to do? Bounced up into Underwood's arms. Oh, referee's gone down. So unfortunate there. Just a small knock on as it squirreled up off the ground. A uh, great moment Come for... onto the field. A U-20 fly half and Sorry. fullback. He's now uh, joined these uh, senior ranks. Three tries. We got uh, put into the scrum, but it's been stolen by Canada. So we're moving the ball away to the right. The defense should be caught flat-footed. Josh Hart's got the ball on the right wing. And he's taken, he's well tackled, but he's been able to recycle the ball. And there's Armstrong, the Uruguayan coming straight through. Referee deemed legal. It's getting quite scrappy again at the breakdown area. But the referee said no, offside against uh, the blue players for things moving forward because it will put them on par with Argentina. And it, it, it may not prove to be critical down at the end of the tournament, but it may. So it's worth going for. The game's won. Uh, and uh, if they can manage the, the try, then that's what, uh, definitely what they want. Well, they've gone to the mall, but now they've had to free the ball. And this moved back to Braid. And he's gone for the drop kick. This is uh, totally off the plot if you're looking for a goal. And I guess he knew that the referee was playing advantage, so he went for the three points. But your, your point is taken, Ian. There's two minutes goal. in the game. Now they've got a five meter line out, and uh, there's the ball, one at the front, drive opportunity. Bit scrub, bit uh, untidy, but now they have a chance to clear the ball. Mm, and the Canada's put that one down, straight down inside the 22. Crucial error, unfortunately, for Canada. Yeah, just Very little time. Just all started just a little bit untidy at the, at the line out, and just the timing of everything just, uh, just off slightly. Uruguay still looking to, to move that ball and run that ball in, in their own end. The referee's going to go back to the first knock, I believe. He's a bit soft on that whistle, uh, the referee, right now. So some of the players aren't hearing it, and they're continuing to play on. But he's going to go. Ooh, they got it. They got it. And it looks like Candle is in possession. Oh, and it's a good pickup from number 20 there. Attacking the ball there, Seb Pearson. Canada's got the ball, moving it to the left. Connor Bray's gone for the dummy, show and go. Still only three meters out from the Uruguayan line. Can Canada get that bonus point? Hubert Biden stood up in the tackle, but he still manages to wiggle forward for another couple meters. Clayton Mears picks the ball up off his toes, trying to wiggle over the line. Canada's still in possession. Penalty, playing the advantage. The referee was on the offside, so Canada. Hustling back to the mark. Decision, Ian? Scrum. Scrum. They'll take a scrum. That's and, a that's uh, good call. And uh, now it's a question, do they have that? Up? So, see, I got a hunch that he might be taking, looking for a flat ball off the number eight, and the ball go behind him to uh, Connor Braid, and oh, okay. they'll take their chances out wide. Oh, They're going to get a better scrum. Uruguay's got different, <laughs> a different opinion on that one. That's a cr uh, It'll mean a, a solid win for Canada, but... Uh, uh, a bonus point they might feel they perhaps should have got. Still time, though. Still time. Armstrong has got his opposite wrapped up in the tackle. Pretty aggressive at that contact area. Armstrong plays like a third flanker sometimes. Canada's won it, and they're moving the ball across to the left. Oh, forced pass. Ball's gone down. Has it been knocked forward? Yes, it has. Referee saying it was knocked on. So Uruguay will be awarded a scrum. No. And full time, Canada finishing the game with the win, minus the bonus point, 28 points to 10 for Canada over Uruguay. Well, I think uh, that's, a, that's a good start for Canada in a 
in the tournament. We talked about the fact only six cap players in their squad of 26, a pretty inexperienced backline, which still did uh, enough good things tonight. Uh, you know, a bit of 